So what would you say are some of the major challenges that an entrepreneur like yourself face? The major challenge, first off, is, you know, you know, getting up and doing it, you know. Before you, you make that step, um, you know, all the questions that come into play, you know, am I going to be successful? How am I going to pay my bills if this doesn't work? You know, if this is what you're passionate about, you know, you need to get up and do it, you know, and trust that you are going to be successful. Okay, guys, are we ready? All right, showtime. Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Ann Hepburn Malcolm of the Trinidad and Tobago Unit Trust Corporation. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Service and I'm excited to kick off the Upreneur series. We'll be interviewing dynamic, young, successful entrepreneurs. They'll be sharing with us some insights, advice, giving us some inspiration and giving us some tips on how to become a successful entrepreneur. So I have with me Mr. Alwyn Wayne. He is the CEO and founder of WePay and I'll let Alwyn tell us more about WePay. Hey Carrie Ann, how you doing? I'm good. So let's jump in Alwyn. Tell us about WePay. WePay. So um, WePay is a online payment platform. Mm -hmm. uh, WePay was created to help bridge the gap between uh, people that are trying to receive payments online, whether they're banked or unbanked, um, and provide an easy way to get into that point. So we've built this platform that, you know, as a business person, you can integrate as an individual. You could use your phone to send WhatsApp messages or Facebook messages to get paid uh, online for goods and services. Okay. So is WePay only based in Trinidad? Because I'm sure I've been hearing WePay in other islands. <laughs> yeah. So we started in Trinidad, but we are now in eight countries. Um, we are as far north as uh, Jamaica. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've just opened an office in Suriname. Um, so Guyana, Barbados, and everywhere in between in the Caribbean we are. Um, so we're in eight locations across the Caribbean where with, with plans of expanding even further. Wow. So, I mean, Aldwin, I'm sure both aspiring and existing entrepreneurs are asking the question, like, how did you do it? Like, how did you know this is the time to take the plunge? This is right. What yeah. was your motivation? We started WePay in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, just about that time, in most developed countries, uh, payments were going online. Uh, you know, apps like you know uh, Airbnb, um, you know, um, you know Facebook, Amazon. All these companies were now processing payments online. Right? In the Caribbean, we, you know, just lack the ability to process payments online. So, uh, you know, understanding that that's the next natural step for business and for individuals. Uh, we decided, uh, you know, to to get in that space to facilitate online payments. So it came out of a need for what the world was doing, um, you know, making sure that we had the Caribbean ready to go in that direction of online and e-commerce payments. I'm curious, when you have a, a, a grand idea like that, where do you start? <laughs> um, where do we start? So first off is understanding the space. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, coming out of university, I spent some time in uh, you know, the United States working. And I understood from the companies that I work with how they transition from traditional payments into e-payments. Understanding that um, you know, processing is normally done through a bank or through a MasterCard, Visa card network partner. So the first step for us was to get that partner you know, working with a bank. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for WePay and for us at WePay, we, we, we looked at what's the steps to getting into that payment processing space, uh, which was you know, having a banking partner. 
We worked on getting a banking partner in Trinidad, developed a business model around that banking partner, making sure they understand how we're going to bring value to them, um, and, 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 you know, and the rest is history. So mm-hmm. I guess understanding the space and, and starting from that uh, point of understanding what is needed to create a solution in that space is how we started. So what would you say are some of the major challenges that an entrepreneur like yourself face? Um, so for me in Trinidad, I would say that, you know, the, the major challenge first off is, you know, you know, getting up and doing it, you know, before you, you make that step, um, you know, all the questions that come into play, you know, am I going to be successful? How am I going to pay my bills if this doesn't work? You know, if this is what you're passionate about, you know, you need to get up and do it, you know, and trust that you are going to be successful, you know, and, and you know, it's going to come with hard work, but you're going to be successful. So overcoming that first barrier of making that step, because everyone has a great idea, but then they're comfortable with the fact that, you know, doing your nine to five is what's going to pay the bills, you know, so getting over, getting by that first hurdle of, of making that step. Um, the second thing I would always say is understanding what you need in terms of financing, you know, you know, do you actually need to have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to start your company or could you get this thing started all online? Um, first and, 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 and test your model, you know, make a minimum viable product to make sure that this is something that you want to get into. We pay started, you know, from home, you know, with zero employees. You know, we had our first customer before we even put like a dollar in. So understand what is required and understand what the finances is that's required. So you're not thinking that, you know, I need to have a, a million dollars to start a business, right? In most cases, you don't. In most cases with online companies, you can literally start that business with the money that is in your pocket right now, right? Because the internet provides you that coverage that you would need to get your product, if it's good, mm-hmm. in the hands of everyone because everyone has a cell phone. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I preach this a lot that the internet is the greatest equalizer. 20 years, 30 years ago, if you start a business, you required a lot of capital to build out a brick and mortar build out marketing, build out advertising. But with the internet, you could put something online today, spend two bucks on Facebook, and everyone knows about your product. Now, if they use it, it's a different story, but they would know about it. So understanding the tools that's available, right? Um, so I know the question is, what's the hurdles? But I see those hurdles as challenges that we can overcome as entrepreneurs utilizing technology. Mm. The third hurdle I would say that's there that you know, with technology you can overcome, uh, would be uh, the fact that um, you now have the world of help. So your idea that you may start off with may not be your final product. Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, that's the problem. If the product you had, or the idea that you had, sorry, was to you know get to point A to point B, and it may not be the best way to get to it. Now with the internet, you could research that 10 times over, get information from different markets around the world. So you could refine your product. So what you do put out is something that will provide value to the customer. So understand that you may have an idea, you may have a product, but it may not be perfect. Utilize the internet, utilize other markets that may have done something similar, find what their strengths were incorporate it into your product and put it out there. So I guess that hurdle that I'm talking about to overcome is, is your own hurdle of thinking that what you have is the best thing. Mm-hmm. Go with an open mind, use the internet, use research to make sure that what you do have is something the customer want mm-hmm. and not just something you want. Do you think you made any mistakes along the way? And were there any learnings from those mistakes? Yeah, uh, I think I made more mistakes than I could count. Um, but each one of those mistakes was something that I learned from. You know, I, I, I think, um, you know, in, in all my businesses, I mean, we pay is my latest venture, but um, I, I own the cable company in Cedrus. I own an internet company in Point Fortin. I own a company that uh, put the, high, the cameras up on the highway. Um, you know, I've been doing this for, for a minute, you know, this entrepreneur thing. And in every one of those companies, I 
learn from mistakes that I make in, in, in those companies to make sure that in this one, I am I'm better prepared for uh, you know, some of the challenges uh, uh, that might you know, confront me. I made a lot of mistakes, and I think I'm better off for it because I learned from it. Mm -hmm. So now that you are an employer, so <laughs> you've yes. moved now from business out of your home and you employ multiple people, Hmm. Are there specific skill sets you look for when you're, you know, when you decide to add somebody to your team? Are you looking for people that are like-minded, that are entrepreneurial, or are you just looking for people who can do a particular task? Like, how, how do you hire? What do you look for? So, so it's funny that you actually brought that up. Um, so just yesterday, hmm. we were bringing on a, a new employee. So I have an HR personnel in Trinidad who manages, you know, the onboarding and offboarding of um, employees on human resource. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I do do for, uh, you know, most of the mid-level and upper-level staff, I personally get involved with uh, the hiring. And for me, the value is not in your degree. As a matter of fact, half of my developers don't have degrees. They're self-taught, you know. Most of them are under 20. Mm. And for me, the value is, is, is not in the degree, you mm -hmm. know, and our business is built on passion for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has the same vision that I have, right? So you would rarely ever hear me mention we pay as mine or mm -hmm. I, right? I would always say us and we, uh, because it is a team effort. You know, everyone in my company, which I just admire purposefully, refers to we pay as ours, mm -hmm. you know, so we work as a team. So when I bring an individual into a meeting room to talk about, hey, are you interested in working here? We pay. We talk about family. We talk about, you know, understanding. We talk about, you know, personality. And if your personality falls in with our personality, then you are higher, regardless of your degrees, nine out of ten times. Mm -hmm. Because what we do in every position, we think that once you understand the we pay culture, you know, and you could learn, we would teach. And, and bring you in and then you now could then expand in that role so we're not looking for 15 degrees and you know 10 years of experience you come in and you ex you you show that you you fit in with our culture you know that's that's how we hire you know and, and we have close to 80 something people across the caribbean wow i i, I didn't realize that the, the team was that big yeah man so Oh, and so I guess for somebody like me, I'm fully submerged into corporate, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I look on with some amount of admiration and envy for entrepreneurs. Do you think, is it possible to have a, a full time job and to nurture, you know, entrepreneurial dreams? simultaneously or is it something where it's like an all or nothing you have to just take the plunge so so i, I mean i could give you from my experience and mm -hmm. um as we were talking before we came on live you know i came from an entrepreneurial family you know i grew up in business where you know my dad from since i knew my dad which is a long time um <laughs> we were always in our own business mm -hmm. right um and it was never something done with you know half effort you know, I mean, my dad is 60 something years old and I'm pretty sure right now he's in one of the company's office doing something, right? Um, so for me, if, if this is what you want to do, you have to believe in yourself that this is what you want to do. You can't have one foot in, you know, the corporate world or the office or working for someone and then thinking that you're going to make your product a success, mm -hmm. right? I live, breathe, sleep, we pay right now, you know. Uh, you know, I get up at five. I normally have meetings at seven because we are in different countries with different time zones, mm -hmm. right? I have an eight o'clock meeting every night because in Jamaica, which is an hour behind us, that's seven o'clock. So that's my Jamaica meeting that I'm part of at eight o'clock. Being an entrepreneur, I think, is a full time, full committed uh, job that you have to be behind and. If you think you need to spend some time to get yourself in that position by working, that's fine. But the second you decide that you're going to toss your hat in that 
entrepreneur in ring. You know, it's going to be full time, full throttle, you know, all, all hands on deck. You, you can't do both because you're going to come up with a halfway product that's going to fail. But what are some of the things that keep you up at night, for want of a better word, that you think about or that concerns you or that you ponder on? Failure. That's that's the that's I think that's my only challenge and my it's my my challenge and my motivation at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm motivated by not failing, and and I set up like almost every night thinking about what's my weak points, you know, what is my company's weak points, what is my head of development weak point, what is my HR manager's weak point, what is my CX team's weak point, you know. I am obsessed on failures of any part of our business you know if someone posts online you know i didn't receive good service with a terminal i would speak to my terminal manager i would sleep all night trying to figure out what is she not doing correct and then i'll call her in that next morning hey what am i not doing correct for you not to be performing properly you know you know because you know the box up with me i don't think it's her fault i think i'm not doing something good enough for mm -hmm. her to be performing in a particular way for someone to go and comment on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm driven by not failing. Uh, and, and I guess that's what keeps me up at night at the same time. You know, I'm trying to figure out if I'm failing at something or if we pay is failing at something or one of we pay employees is failing at something, mm -hmm. what we're not doing correct. So mm -hmm. that, that's, I think that's what keeps me up at night. So, so once we stop failing, we'll be okay. So, <laughs> so what's your, what's your, What's your goal right now and where do you see yourself in like five, ten years? In five years, um, I, I do anticipate um, a lot more online solutions. Mm -hmm. And I expect that because we onboard so much customers, yes. because we manage so much KYC, that we could focus on providing a shared service for KYCs. So unit trust, if you need to onboard a customer, Instead of them having to come into the office, you could reach out to WePay. We probably have their KYC on top. So I could share that with you and you could onboard a customer in a second instead of days. Okay, all right. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, based on our discussions prior, I know that you're always thinking of what next, what next. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like your parents were a big part in terms of instilling that For sure. culture in you. If, if, if your parents, you know, weren't as entrepreneurial or didn't push you as much, do you think you would be yeah, I'd wired the way you are? Yeah, I'd probably be a DJ. <laughs> I, I think I would have, yeah. DJ Rain on, on, on one of those radio stations. I'm sure you would have been good at it. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I owe 110 to my, my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. um, they, they embody perfection. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is 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 my biggest uh, inspiration. Um, you know, I to this day I'm trying to be like him, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not too sure I'm, I'm there yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm trying to be like him uh, every single day. Every single day I wake wow. up, I would be like, you know, what would dad do? You know, uh, to this day, um, like you saw before, I I called on the phone to get him. He was working, so I called mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's the owner of the business, yeah, or businesses. But you know, he finds himself there every day. Um, but they are—they are my motivation to this day mm -hmm. to always be better than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of my success, if at all, is based on you know how I was raised um, by my family. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, tell me when you let's say you you have a goal you know i want to go into this country or what does that entail do you just pick up the phone or do you 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 try to utilize your connections how do you make it happen i guess it, you know seeing the end product yeah. it's so amazing to me and i'm just trying to wrap my head around like what what takes place behind the scenes you know all right so let's pick a country pick a, pick a country i'll tell you how we got in there jamaica jamaica yeah man <laughs> Jamaica, someone reached out. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, we love what you're doing mm -hmm. in Trinidad. Uh, I think they saw it online. We would love to be your agent in Jamaica. So I flew across to Jamaica, met with him. I mean, he 
you know, it wasn't someone that fit. Um, but being in Jamaica, um, you know, that's a very aggressive market. And, you know, um, just I was staying at the Pegasus and just being there, I met with, you know, people who introduced me to CEOs of banks, NCB, JMB, and all. So I met with almost everyone just through connections that I made on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I just blossomed into finding the right people, finding the right banking partners, finding the right networks. Um, and yeah, and, and that's how it grew. So I think a lot of it happened organically mm-hmm. because the product is something that is needed in the Caribbean. Right. And there's a lot of people who would like to help mm-hmm. and like to benefit as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, once, once it's out there, and like I said before, the internet is the greatest equalizer. You know, normally you would have needed some huge connection in some country, country to set up your business. Because we pay on the internet, I'm having companies reach out to me. I have companies from San Francisco reaching out to partner to bring it to the communities in you know rural America. I have people in Central America, Central, uh, South America, mm-hmm. uh, and those are ongoing stuff, ongoing things that happen. So, you know, I could you know just pick one of them and I could be in Guatemala tomorrow, right? For somebody who reached out mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, right? So, um, it's it's not like it was before, you know. The internet has we pay all around the world just from LinkedIn or on Facebook. And anyone that has value in what we're doing would reach out. Excellent. Then, you know, we, we connect. So has your business been impacted positively or negatively by the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, so, I mean, first off, COVID is terrible. I, mean, I can't travel and no one can travel. But, you know, I hate it anyway. Um, people are dying. It's something that, you know, I, I you know, I, I really you know, don't want a song, you know, you know, that I'm taking lightly um, because I, I, I understand it impacted a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, people lost their lives and so forth. But for us, from a business standpoint, COVID has, you know, exponentially grown our business because in the region, the need for making online payments is no longer a luxury. Mm-hmm. There's no necessity to keep your business going. Yes. So we've seen four, five hundred percent increase over the last five months during COVID. Do you think it's sustainable? It has been sustainable. So after you know we came out of lockdown, we were anticipating you know a plateau and then probably a sink. But you know people are not going back to the normal. You know. People are not going back, you know, to what it was before, well, so far, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, We process payment for a lot of the huge companies that you would have gone in to make in-store payments or monthly payments in-store. And with the stores open back up, you know, the government relaxing some of the security uh, um, mechanisms, uh, people are still utilizing the online uh, methods for payment. And with every bank now putting their bank cards or their debit cards as a Visa debit card, we only expect to see this further increase because now you can make a payment online with your bank card or your links card. Yeah? So um, COVID has been very, uh, you, know, you know, positive in terms of, you know, the growth of our business. Um, you know, but... You know, a caveat that was saying, under, you know, it's, it's, it's negative in, in, in terms of how it impacted our country. So uh, I'm not trying to make light of the situation, mm-hmm. but just to answer your question, yes, it, it did positively impact our business, exponentially so. Okay, wow. So what would you say to businesses that need to adapt to the new norm? You know, so as you said, m- many businesses had to, um, change it to a more kind of either technological platform or I guess for the restaurants curbside or right. <laughs> do you have any advice considering that you're anchored in technology that you would give to traditional businesses in terms of how they could pivot and you know emerge for sure um, call me <laughs> okay. about two years ago um, I can't remember the conference I was in it was high up somewhere well in Trinidad for sure but I can't remember who hosted it and um, the focus was on technology. Mm-hmm. And part of my presentation was 
businesses should not try to add technology. Mm -hmm. If your business is not based in technology to provide your service, you're not future ready. If you're saying, oh, I provide a service with technology, you're not setting your business up for success. Your business needs to start from a platform of technology. Think about all the, you know, the com companies over the last six months that become trillion dollar companies, Amazon, Apple, they're all technology-based companies that provide a service, not a service company that added technology. That's the pivot that most people need to make, and I'm not too sure they're making it so in the Caribbean. So, Alwyn, break it down for me. Um, let's say I am a consultant or I sell baked goods. How do I start from a place of technology? Easy. It just sounds like, like it went over my head. Break it down for me. Okay, sure, <laughs> no problem. Your technology... Mm -hmm should get people to your big goods. Mm -hmm. Not your big goods are looking for technology to get to your customers. And how does this happen? Think of every customer is going to find your solution through their mobile device. That's plausible, right? Mm -hmm. Because you spend 80% of your sc screen time is on your mobile device, right? Mm -hmm. You're always looking at your phone. So they're going to find you through your mobile device, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, social media, or direct marketing, or mobile app. So, you sell cookies, right? What you need to have is a company that lives on Facebook, that have all the pretty pictures of the cookie. So, you bake your cookie, you take all your pictures, you put it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You're not going to put it on you know, a flyer. You're not going to send brochures out. You're going to put it on Facebook. You're going to have on your Facebook a link that takes you back to an application that allows you to buy those cookies immediately. I don't want to pick up a phone and call you. I don't want to set up a time when I can meet you. I saw this pretty picture of these beautiful cookies. When I click this button, I want you to say, okay, I can send 10 cookies to you tomorrow. That's, that's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's how, I'm going to buy, that's how I'm going to buy your cookies. Because you put a platform in place that allow me to see this picture and I could get that those cookies by tomorrow. Now, if you think that through, that process is technology. You need to make sure that on those Facebook pictures, when you hit buy, you have everything in place that you would get the order, you would get the location, you would get the amount and the date that they needed to be sent to them. So you now could bake those cookies specifically for those customers on that day. Mm -hmm. That's technology. If you weren't utilizing that solution, you would have just randomly baked cookies and hope someone would come and buy it. And that's how you would fail. Is that kind of technology affordable and easy to access? 80% of what I just said was free. A website, you could do a WordPress website. That's free. Integration with WePay for payments. That's free. Um, management of the page, you could pay a person to do it. And that's the 20% that I'm talking about. But you now have a whole website that sells your cookies that you bake from home. So you don't pay rent. You don't hire a marketing agent. You don't have a staff that you pay. You don't go outside selling people to come into your store. You do this from home after you finish work because you're now starting, right? So you manage time. You're more efficient because you're not wasting... Uh, raw materials you're only baking cookies that you have to make because those are paid for and the technology have you in that position so you're not going to wake up at five o'clock to make a thousand cookies and hope your friends go sell it at work you're going to wake up at 7 30 and only make 80 cookies because tt post is coming to collect it to drop it off to five people and that's how you utilize technology to make sure that you have a product that works and if so, no one buys your cookies, well, then you shouldn't be making cookies. <laughs> you made it sound so easy. It is that simple. New generation. This is how, this is how you, you run business. I realize. Use the internet. Use technology to get you to that point. You know, everything, like I said, most of what I just told you doesn't come with a cost. Mm -hmm. The cost is the legacy cost. The mm -hmm. labor that you would hire to build, make the cookies. All that online stuff, the website, 
paying for hosting those are like 9.99 for a year or one 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 dollar and 99 cents for a wordpress site you know it doesn't cost you anything but how do you know which one is good like which one which company to choose to do this for you or no so it sounds super difficult right mm -hmm. but if you just go to google and you type in wordpress site or wordpress developer you would see it all pops up it would take you probably two days of research to realize that all I'm talking about is stuff that you could do. It's yeah. point and click. You know, it's, it's, it's so easy. Um, you know, and that's what we did at WePay as well. You would have a WordPress site that traditionally, to get online, you have to go to a bank. You fill out a form, create a bank account, months. After you get a bank account, they hand you a document this thick to integrate payments onto your site. But we pay you just go create an account, carry on, upload your ID. Okay, that's carry on. Add your bank account that you want your money to go to, unit trust. Um, and then that's it. You take that plugin, put it onto the WordPress site that you just built overnight. And people now would start paying you because of the quality of the pictures you take out. They would never, they have never bought a cookie from you, but you take out some good pictures, I'll buy it. Oh, when I'm gonna I'm gonna find something to sell, and one day maybe in another segment you have to walk me through me creating this site linked to WePay where people can order whatever I decide to make my doubles. Double. <laughs> <laughs> my whatever. Uh, that might be a thing. Online doubles, yeah. You made it sound so easy, like. It's easy. Okay, so Alwyn. Before we wrap up, mm -hmm. tell me about one of your happiest moments. Um, during this journey? Happiest moments during this journey. Um, so far, I would say the happiest moment I had was when we signed with MasterCard. Um, so when we started WePay, you know, you see the Mark Zuckerbergs and the, you know, uh, uh, Elon Musk and all these companies when they partner with huge companies, right? So we know we are a small payment company out of Trinidad and, you know, we are you know, probably thinking 10 years down the line, we might meet up with a, a Visa or a MasterCard. And, and, and two, year, two years into it, we had MasterCard call us. Like, bro, you had the right number? <laughs> so what are you calling me? You know, we're just here in Trinidad, right? Um, so how did, that, how did that go? Like, did your cell phone ring in here? Hi, I'm calling from MasterCard. Like, how did that go down? <laughs> how did the MasterCard? So <laughs> honestly, so we have a banking partner and the banking partner introduced the Visa. Mm -hmm. So we were doing some work with Visa, just on your low. You know, it was a real surreal moment to be walking through MasterCard, you know, and, you know, seeing, you know, like PayPal and all those companies, how, you know, they, they just blew up to know that we started this thing in Trinidad and we have, you know, the number one and number two payment company in the world inviting us to Miami because I did go to Visa as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. It was surreal to just, you know, walking through those buildings and I'm thinking, dude, what am I doing here? You know, this is TV thing, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, this is this is not real. Um, so in in the we pay life, I think that's the highlight, you know, to have, you know, the top two payment companies in the world, you know, reach out to not only partner, but invest in our company. Wow that's that's awesome yeah it's crazy Ooh. i want to make a movie about it it's it sounds like like stuff movies are made of <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of movies yeah an off the cuff question tell me about the fun side of you mm -hmm. we know mr we pay but tell, share with us something we don't know or that we wouldn't know okay so for me uh what is fun what is fun about me um i don't you know, outside of work, I don't take anything that serious. I um, you know, a clown. They, they, I mean, I remember in primary school, you know, that's what my teacher told my moms. I was a class clown, um, and I embraced it. So I, I think I, I grew up being like the clown all the time. So I'm always the one to try to make you laugh all the time. You know, once I'm not doing work, you know, so it's it's like night and day. So my employees know me as Mr. Wayne, but everyone else uh, who you know don't work for me um, knows me as 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 a slutty clown. So I'm 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 that guy that always would 
you know say the off cuff uh comment or um make the remarks that somebody else won't make mm-hmm. uh just to make everyone laugh you know that's 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 the intent so i think you know um, if if you know me outside of we pay and you see me talking about we pay you're like who is that person because it's it's completely it's two completely different people mm-hmm. so yeah i'm i'm a clown i believe that because you had us cracking up <laughs> wait hang on you believe i'm a Earth. clown <laughs> oh and that's a, a great way for us to you know wrap up this segment it's been insightful it's been fun and well i learned a lot i have homework to do now so and i'm, I'm sure you know whether you know you're aspiring or whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur there, there must have been nuggets somewhere in this interview you know and i feel i uh, actually feel hopeful now that i could be an entrepreneur and a successful one you should be thank you thank very you. much alwin thank you for having me <laughs> you're most welcome <laughs>